Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as we conclude the general debate, I extend my sincere gratitude to all the member states for their active participation in the debate. The discussions that we had this week show the importance of multilateral cooperation, which we need to overcome the challenges our world faces. In this month of September, we came together for the general debate in a period that was particularly tumultuous. Delegations addressed the pressing challenges that face us. The, so the climate crisis of climate change, the sustainable development goals, abject poverty, and a global international financial architecture that is ineffective, persistent gender inequality, and and the adverse impacts of digital technology. These are the main challenges that have emerged from our discussions. We need to continue to build on the summit of the future. This summit was marked by the adoption of the Pact for the Future and its annex, which aimed to revitalize our multilateral system and international cooperation. The Pact for the Future and the Global Digital Compact and the Declaration on Future Generations appear as a solid promise to galvanize our efforts toward the achievement of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Our Pact for the Future essentially aims to address the challenges that are impediments to international cooperation and have been for many years. These challenges are what make it problematic to achieve solutions, which solutions can be which can be achieved through this agreement and its annex. I call upon all states and stakeholders to work toward effective implementation of the Pact for the Future and of its annex. My office has also instituted an awareness raising program in this regard to be applied throughout the 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly. We stand ready to receive any advice or any assistance to facilitate our actions. Ladies and gentlemen, while we are meeting in New York, violent conflicts are raging in Gaza, Lebanon, Sudan, and Ukraine. This is unfortunately not an exhaustive list of the conflicts and crises affecting member states of the United Nations. In the last few days, the world has seen an extremely dramatic escalation of violence between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon. That escalation risks causing war in the entire Middle East region. As we speak, peace in the Middle East is hanging delicately on a shoestring. There is pervasive tension and uncertainty in the region. Thousands of people have lost their lives. Many others have been displaced. Infrastructure has been destroyed. This must stop, and it must stop now. The world must not allow an all-out war to happen in this volatile region. We call on all parties, Israel, Hamas, and Hezbollah, to urgently conclude a ceasefire and for all remaining hostages to be freed immediately and unharmed. I also call on all those with influence on the parties to demand an immediate ceasefire and dialogue. 
I further call on all states supplying weapons to the region to desist from such actions and give peace a chance. For no sustainable peace will be achieved militarily. Negotiations and diplomatic solutions must take precedence over brutal force. The Charter of the United Nations instructs that member states settle their disputes peacefully so as not to endanger international peace and security. As you heard me saying at the opening of the general debate, only a two-state solution based on relevant UN resolutions can guarantee lasting peace and security for both the people of Israel and Palestine and indeed for the rest of the region. Excellencies, during the general debate we heard from 190 member states, including contributions from 71 heads of state, 42 heads of government, six vice presidents and crown princes, eight deputy prime ministers, 53 ministers, three vice ministers, and seven chairs of delegations. Moreover, we heard from three observers. Ladies and gentlemen, during the general debate this September, it was disappointing and frankly unacceptable that only about 10% of the speakers were women. This glaring disparity speaks to a deeper issue that we cannot ignore. We must do far better on gender equality and this cannot simply be a talking point. It must remain a priority on our agenda demanding action, not just acknowledgement as we move forward. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in my opening remarks of the general debate, I emphasized that only by working together despite our differences can we confront and overcome the complex and discouraging challenges before us. Only through dialogue, listening, and collective action can we find solutions that benefit all of us. The theme I choose for the 79th session, Unity in Diversity for the Advancement of Peace, Sustainable Development, and Human Dignity for Everyone Everywhere, is not just a guiding principle, it is a call to action. The theme reminds us that our strength lies in our diversity and our ability to unite stakeholders around our common goals. Let us all move forward together with this spirit of unity and shared responsibility. Let us continue our work with the clear aim of building a peaceful, just and dignified future for all. Thank you.